It was nearly a year ago that I released my video on the 45 Drives Proxinator VM16. Over that time, I grew a giant beard, not bad, migrated off of VMware, and the Proxinator has become the singular production virtual server for 2GT, my home lab, and all of my self-hosting services. A year of the Proxinator. Let's catch up. Hey there, home lovers, self hosters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here. A year ago, the world was still very much in flux over the Broadcom acquisition of VMware. And during that time, I personally and professionally was also very much in flux, spending a ton of time researching where to go and what to do as an alternative to vCenter and ESXi. It was around that time that 45 Drives reached out after seeing some of my videos and said, hey, we have this new product called the Proxinator and we think it answers all of your questions and concerns about Proxmox. So they sent me a VM16 and I dove in fully into the Proxinator and Proxmox. It has now been a full year, so let's see if the promise matches the reality. All right, let's talk about the Proxinator VM16 first. Just as a reminder, let's go over the features and hardware spec with the system when I first received it. Let's run through this quickly. The 45 Drives Proxinator VM16 is a single socket 2U server that features 16 seven millimeter SSD bays up front on a tri-mode backplane that supports SAS, SATA, and NVMe disks on the right-hand side of the unit. I filled this unit with 16 800 gigabyte Intel data center SATA SSDs for a grand total of just under 6.4 terabytes of storage. On the left hand side of the VM16, a dual slot mounting location is available for PCIe expansion backed by a full 16x PCIe slot, which was a point of contention for some viewers. About six months ago back, I installed an RTX 3070 GPU for transcoding and LLM work in the system. Around the back, the VM16 came with dual 100 gig connectivity via a Mellanox ConnectX5 interface card, two built-in 10 gig ethernet connections, VGA, USB 3.0 Type-A ports, serial, and dedicated IPMI connectivity. Inside, the Proxinator VM16 came equipped with a single actively cooled AMD EPYC 8324P 32 core CPU and 256 gigabytes of DDR5 ECC RAM. For a comprehensive deep dive into the system, be sure to check out the video we released on this a year ago. This configuration was made to mirror and exceed the VMware vCenter 8 cluster that I was running at the time. That cluster was a dual node cluster built on top of four E5 2680v4 CPUs. So, in effect, I was able to consolidate all of my older hardware down into a single node with a ton more compute power and save on energy, which was a major win. When you order a unit, 45 Drives helps you configure your Proxinator so that it best fits your needs. And they have more than just the VM16. They also have a VM8 and a VM32 in their NVMe Ready product line, as well as the MI4, C8, and F1 models for mechanical and SSD systems. This, however, is not a commercial for 45 Drives or the Proxinator. So let's get to how the system's been working up to this point. First off, let's start with energy consumption. Under my current load with the added 3070 GPU, the system system sees anywhere from a little over 270 watts to nearly 340 watts of consumption. That might feel like a lot of power consumption to some, but it's running my entire business, home lab, and more in a single box, and it's considerably more energy efficient than the previous cluster hardware running on older SMC gear. It's also incredibly tolerant to temperature swings in my data center, also known as my garage. You all know by this point that I live in Oregon, and my summers aren't anywhere nearly as intolerable as those who live in Arizona, for example. But that being said, my garage gets hot in the summer. It's entirely normal for my garage with all of the gear running to reach a stable 90 plus degrees Fahrenheit, or about 32 degrees Celsius for those who don't speak freedom units. I bring this up because that's not an ideal climate for data center gear, but the Proxinator doesn't care in the slightest. Which leads me to a story about the Proxinator, which I caution you to follow at your own risk. When I first powered on the Proxinator out of the box, the system was loud. Like, how loud? Like four Nedec Ultraflow data center server fans running at full speed loud. If you know, you know. Anyway, I began digging through the system and found that 45 drives had intentionally connected those four miniature F5 tornado-like fans directly to their power distribution board to guarantee cooling. I went ahead and fixed the glitch by connecting them directly to the chassis fan headers on the Gigabyte mainboard and let the BMC be the controller and decision maker. Problem solved, like it legit solved the issue. The system was cool and it was quiet, only moving the amount of air necessary. I reached out to 45 Drives about the change I made and they were very clear that the way they had physically cabled the chassis fans was the correct way to do it and strongly recommended that I return the cabling to the way it was designed. 
I, uh, I left them connected to the main board and a year later it's been just as good and it doesn't sound like a wind tunnel in my garage. Now, I'm not saying you should follow what I did. I fully take responsibility only for my actions here. I'm just passing on my experience. So let's talk about the physical design because that was a point of contention for a few viewers in the last video. First off, let's talk about the power button placement since that was a point of contention for some in the comments. The Proxinator's one and only power button is on the rear of the unit. Is that an odd choice? Sure, I suppose. It's certainly the first time I've seen a power button placed there. However, and take this for what it's worth, it's never been an issue. It's a server with a full IPMI. I honestly can't remember the last time I physically powered on the proxinator using the button, but I get it, it's unusual. Next, there were comments about how if you mount a GPU in the chassis, the GPU's ports are facing out the front of the unit. And yeah, that's also a somewhat unusual design choice as well. However, I mounted a 3070 GPU in the system and that GPU doesn't exhaust out the mounting bracket, so it's never been an issue. The GPU mounting mechanism makes complete sense when you take into account the layout of the system. The system has six 16x PCA slots that are fully available because of the relocated GPU PCA slot, so it's kind of a win-win in my opinion. Again, maybe a bit unusual when you stack it against your run-of-the-mill Dell or HPE, but then again, you can't fit a full-size gaming GPU in a Dell or HPE 2U server either. So let's round up a few final thoughts about the Proxinator before we call this a wrap. I wanna to touch on support because that's one of those things that's really important for businesses who might be looking at 45 drives as a partner. Early on in my deployment, I ran into issues with the storage driver crashing sporadically and all of my ZFS storage for my VMs disappearing from the host. Obviously, that is a big deal. After troubleshooting with 45 drives, we discovered the issue was with the included HBA driver for the storage hardware. In no time, the engineering pushed a better driver to the repo. One app get dist upgrade later, we were up and running and the problem was solved. I also had issues with the SDN functionality in Proxmox early on in my deployment. Admittedly, this was a self-inflicted problem, not a 45 drives problem, but here's where I can say that their support for Proxmox was fantastic. Not only did they work through resolving my SDN foolishness, but they did a fair bit of educating me along the way, and that was genuinely appreciated. I've been around in the data center game for a long time, and I've spent my share of long hours on calls with Dell and HPE, and 45 drives support just hits different. I do have one gripe about the system that still irks me to this day, and that's the decision to only support seven millimeter SSDs in the front of the unit. I completely understand where they're coming from with that form factor, especially when you scale that up to the VM32 with a full 32 seven millimeter SSDs in the front. Why that's an issue for me is that it limits my options in terms of what SSDs I can use in the system. There are a lot of affordable 15 millimeter SAS SSD options out there still, especially when you consider the secondary market. Now, of course, if you're ordering a brand new Proxinator from 45 drives built out with storage, that's not gonna be a problem since you'd likely designed it for your current and future needs for the life of the box but I still feel it. So here are my final thoughts on the 45 drives Proxinator one year later. Still incredibly impressed with this system. In terms of reliability, stability, and performance, it's been an incredible workhorse. I would hands down still recommend this to any business looking to move to Proxmox. And that friends is gonna do it for this video. We'll see you on the next one.